Over the generations, humanity has lost its connection to the supernatural. To the point where modern humanity uses ancient rituals used to communicate with the divine or to damn for their own amusement. Most of these rituals are conducted improperly and simply used as a cheap thrill with the clueless invoker having no idea that he is putting his soul on the line for no other gain. It is this that has led me to share a ritual that could actually be beneficial to its invoker. The liar's game is a lesser known ritual. If done correctly and with a little luck, it could grant its invoker near godlike power. But be warned, this ritual isn't for the faint of heart and failure could have dire consequences. Please do not start the ritual before you have read everything written here. Failure to do so may cost you dearly. With that out of the way, here is what you will need. Eight large red candles, four small white candles, two small wooden boards, two soft pillows, a large bag of salt, white chalk, two identical glasses, preferably shot glasses, two identical bottles of hard liquor, props if you choose gin or whiskey, red twine, and a solid wooden door with a lock. Before you start the ritual, you will need to find a room with a sturdy solid wooden door with a sturdy lock on it. It would be preferable if the door is pulled when open. It is recommended that you prepare the room during the day. Take the bag of salt and pour some in each corner of the room. If the room has windows, make sure to cover it up. Pour some salt in a straight line across any window sill in the room. Now take the red twine and wrap it around the inside door handle. After the handle is fully covered with the twine, Use the same strand to cover the opposite handle. Do not cut the twine. Now take the salt and pour a square box on the floor from the door frame. Place one of the pillows at the end of the box. Place a bottle of liquor, a glass, and a small wooden board in front of the pillow. Place four red candles in the corner of the salt box. Place the four white candles in the form of a box right in front of the door inside the room. Draw a pentagram inside the circle. You can write a summoning spell inside the circle to improve the odds of success, but I doubt the majority of people desperate or stupid enough to try this ritual will be able to correctly write a Latin summoning spell on the door. Besides, not doing it adds to the rush factor. Now, you can close and make sure the door can lock. It is extremely important that you can lock the door. But for now, keep the door open. Turn on the lights in the room and keep the key of the door with you. Now, the majority of your preparation is completed. You can go to sleep now. Remember to set an alarm for 2.30 a.m. This will give you 30 minutes to do the final preparations before you start the ritual. After you wake up, proceed to the room. Make sure none of the preparations have been disturbed. If everything is still in place, it is safe to proceed. Light all the red and white candles inside the room, then close and lock the door. I cannot stress how important it is to lock the door. Now place the other pillow in front of the door of the liquor, glass, and small board in front of the pillow. Take the last of the salt and pour it in front of the door. Take the four remaining red candles and place them in a box shape in front of the door and behind the pillow, then light them. Take the chalk 
and draw the same symbols as you did on the inside of the door. You should be finished before 3 a.m. At 3 a.m., place your hand inside the center of the pentagram and repeat the following line. O oh, sons of darkness, O oh, daughters of malice, I beseech thee, lend me thy time for a game of chance. Repeat this slowly and clearly three times, then sit on your pillow. If you did it correctly, you will hear three loud knocks the moment you sit down. If you heard it, congratulations. You have correctly performed the ritual and now have a demonic entity sitting on the pillow on the other side of the door. If you haven't figured it out yet, you just summoned a random demon for a very high stakes game. As the host, you get to go first. Here are the rules and objective of the game. The aim of the game is to catch the demon lying three times before it catches you. You start off by asking the demon a question. It would have three options. Tell the truth, lie, or pass. You then have to decide if what it just told you was the truth or a lie. If it chose to pass, it has to pour a glass full of liquor and drink it all. Upon finishing the glass, it will tap the bottom of the glass three times on the wooden board. All questions have to be personal in nature. If you catch it in a lie, you get a point. But if you call the truth as a lie, you will be penalized and you will have to drink two glasses of liquor. If you miss the lie, it gets a point. After this, it gets a turn to ask you a question. The same rules will apply to it. The game finishes in a draw. If the booze runs out, or if day breaks, the first one to successfully catch free lies, or tell free lies, is the winner. If you win, the demon will congratulate you and leave you a boon. This item will normally be a necklace or ring. Wearing it will have several effects. Anything from extreme luck to massive levels of charisma. If you lose, you will have to pay the demon a tribute. And trust me, these things can be very demanding. It might just claim your soul, or it could lay claim to the souls of your future offspring. Or you, if you are very unlucky, it may claim your anguish and drag you back to hell with it to suffer for all eternity. After the game is finished, don't open the door till morning. Lastly, here are the important things you should look out for before you start. It is important to choose the right room for the summoning. It would be preferable if the room was empty. Objects in the room might get damaged. Don't use a hallway as a summoning room. This will only end badly for you, as you have no exit route and most likely give a demon full reign over your house. This might be obvious, but don't sleep in the room you use as the summoning room. It is important for the door to be able to lock. It might not seem like much, but the lock combined with the red twine will keep the demon from opening the door. If it does manage to open the door, you are completely screwed. If the light is off or the door is closed, lock the door and leave the house and don't come back till morning. If any of the salt lines have been removed or disturbed, you may reinforce them with more salt, but it would be wiser to simply close and lock the door and leave the house because you most likely drew the attention of something powerful enough to remove your protection wards. It is important not to cheat. If you have a smaller glass 
or substituting your liquor with something less potent. It will be seen as cheating, and you will automatically forfeit the game. If after all of this, you should still wish to continue, all I can say is this. May fortune favor the foolish.